More documents discovered at President Biden's home. The high stakes investigation into classified material taking another turn. Marking Martin Luther King Jr. Day, a time of reflection, community service, and action. And should we keep it going or do you want some snow around here? After a nice weekend, we are also expecting a mild Monday temperature wise, but a change is also in the air. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 a.m. starts now. Good morning, everybody. On the 16th day of January, the observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Rhonda Walker. And I'm Jason Colthorpe. Good morning, Detroit. And were you, by the way, saying that our choices are sun and snow or no sun and no snow? I want sun, and I don't care what else happens after that. <laughs> I kind of agree with that. Meteorologist <laughs> Ashley Barrissey checking the forecast for us this morning. Now, what if it was like sunny and 20 below zero, Ron? I'm okay with that. It's <laughs> okay. better than no sun at all. Uh, gotta have it. Yeah, I know. The sunshine definitely does make a difference. Hopefully you got out and enjoyed it, even though it was a little chilly this weekend, but we did have quite a bit of sunshine across southeast Michigan. Not going to be the case today, but warming temperatures, that's kind of the trade-off. So as we look at our four zones, in our metro zone here in Detroit, 28 degrees, you'll find that same, same temperature in Port here on 25 off in Ann Arbor and 27 at this hour in Adrian. A little warmer in western Michigan. We have some warmth coming off of Lake Michigan. I point that out just because for South Haven, Muskegon, they're just shy of 40 degrees. That's closer to what our afternoon high is going to be here across portions of Metro Detroit. Clouds and uh, radar. Actually, we took radar off just to show you that thick cloud deck that we are tracking pushing into the Great Lakes region. So we're going to be welcoming back that winter gray ahead of some rain showers that push in later this afternoon. 39 are high. It'll be a little breezy, but the rain showers arrive just before for sunset and time for the evening rush hour drive if you do have to work today for tonight 35 degrees so distinctly warmer than where we were last night warming temperatures that tease us up for an even warmer Tuesday as highs will rise into the upper 40s we will still be in and out of a passing shower we'll time it all out for you hour by hour in just a few minutes but let's also time out that commute if you're heading out the door now here's your time saver traffic and that commute is looking fantastic this morning. There are no problems to report at this time. So if you're heading out right now, it is smooth sailing. We've got green arrows on our maps and even better news. I-75, which was shut down for the weekend between Clark and Springwells. Well, that is back open now. So if that's part of your morning commute, you can feel free to use that drive. Let's take a look at your morning drive with our 1-800-CALL-SAM chopper shot over I-696 and Mound. And man, is it quiet out there this morning? And that is likely because many people do have the day off. So Expect lighter traffic volumes today and conditions are looking great, Rhonda. All right, Kim, thank you. Today, the nation pauses to recognize the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. President Biden started this year's remembrance on Sunday when he became the first president to speak at Dr. King's former church down in Atlanta at Ebenezer Baptist. The president is expected to follow up his speech by meeting with civil rights advocate Al Sharpton and the National Action Network later today. Also today, thousands are expected to take part in the Detroit rally in March to honor Dr. King. And we want to take a live picture as well at this awesome monument of Dr. King in Washington, D.C. If you've never been there and you've never seen it, it is it just the size of it just takes your breath away. I'm just going to say breathtaking is yeah. the word. And it's his own words that help to inspire many people to take action. During one of his many speeches, the civil rights icon said, quote, you can kill the dreamer but you can't kill the dream. Let's get to Nick Monticelli this morning, who's live for us. Uh, first time it's being held in person since the pandemic, the uh, festivities today, Nick. Yeah, in fact, we're expecting thousands of people to come here. In fact, this is gonna start right outside of St. Matthew slash St. Joseph's Episcopal Church here on Woodward. They're gonna gather for a rally out front and march down Woodward. and. As you can imagine, this means a lot to a whole lot of people, especially those who have been working to put something like this on for decades. It means a lot. You know, it reconnects me to my own personal history. What means a lot is the Martin Luther King Jr. rally in March that Abiyomi Azikawe co-founded 20 years ago. 1917. 1917. Yes. Today, a thousand people march again, beginning 
at St. Matthew's and St. Joseph's Episcopal Church in Detroit. This is the second oldest African-American congregation in the city of Detroit, and it was very instrumental in the Underground Railroad. You know, Detroit was a center of people fleeing uh, the South, so Detroit really has a profound history in regard to freedom, justice, and equality for African-American people. It will not be long. As I'm sure you know, Dr. King was a strong supporter of grassroots movements, organizing and mobilizing volunteers to help those most in need. No change comes without a demand, and the demand has to come from the people. And if you look at history, any change that we see is because the people rose up and demanded. Yvonne Jones has been fighting for better equality in Detroit for decades. I am so happy to be a part of Dr. King's legacy because it is because of the fights and the struggle of the civil rights movement that I obtained so many opportunities. Well, we want to encourage people to be active beyond MLK Day, to join some organization, some coalition in their communities to fight uh, for a better Detroit, uh, to improve the overall conditions of people here in the city. We're not done. We still have racism. We still have poverty. We still have wars going on. So we're here to continue the work. And that work continues again with a rally in March today. The rally is at noon, again, outside St. Matthew, St. Matthew's and St. Joseph Episcopal Church. And then the march begins at 145. We are live this morning. Nick Monticelli, Local 4. All right, Nick, thank you. And certainly so thankful for those civil rights fighters then and now because the work does continue. And is needed, for sure. Many of Dr. King's messages during his lifetime still ring true today. That's what's so incredible, mm -hmm. right? Uh, especially true when it comes to hate. For example, he often said darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And today, the 38th annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday Peace Walk will take place in Southfield. Yes, and it starts at 9 o'clock this morning. It's an annual event that kicks off at Hope United Methodist Church on Northwestern Highway there on Civic Center as well. After there will be a program at 11 a.m. at the Southfield Pavilion right there on Evergreen. Following the program, you get to eat. They have a taste fest with food and drinks right inside of the pavilion as well. And there are many more events that are happening all across Metro Detroit today. If you want to get the family out on this day off, which really in Dr. King's honor means a day of service. We posted a complete list on the homepage of clickondetroit.com. We could learn more today about what caused a passenger plane to crash as it was preparing to land at a newly opened airport in Pokhara, Nepal. A spokesman for the country's Civil Aviation Authority says both the flight data and cockpit voice recorders have been recovered from the crash site. A witness says he saw the plane spinning violently in the air as it began to descend right before it crashed nose first into the ground. So far, 68 of the 72 people aboard the Yeti Airlines plane have been confirmed dead. This is Nepal's deadliest plane crash in 30 years. With now to Washington, where there is new fallout over more classified documents found on President Joe Biden's property. The president facing new criticism from Republicans and even Michigan Democratic lawmaker Debbie Stabenow admits the so-called misstep is troubling. It's certainly embarrassing. It's one of those moments that obviously they wish hadn't happened. NBC's Chris Pallone has more now on this from Washington. Jason and Rhonda, good morning. Sources tell NBC News President Biden is frustrated by the growing backlash after aides discovered classified material from his time as vice president in a Washington office and at his Delaware home. Sources say President Biden views the discovery of classified material at his former office and his current home as the result of probable sloppiness by aides as they packed up his items when his term as vice president came to an end. The president hasn't answered questions about the matter since Thursday, avoiding reporters' questions several times Sunday during a trip to Atlanta to mark Reverend Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. His mission was something even deeper. It was spiritual. It was moral. Democrats are trying to draw distinctions between the Biden team's handling of classified documents and that of former President Trump, who has insisted he declassified items found during an FBI search at his Florida home. The president's lawyers, the moment they found out about the documents that day, turned them over to the National Archives and 
uh, ultimately to the Department of Justice. But with special counsels now investigating both presidents handling of classified material, House Republicans are eager to put the Biden White House under the microscope. The hypocrisy here is great. We're very concerned about a lack of transparency. We're very concerned, as I've said many times, about a two-tier system of justice in America. And we just want equal treatment, and hopefully we'll get some answers very soon. But questions remain. Was he aware that they'd been moved? Did he, in any case, you know, in the past five years, has he uh, handled those documents? Was he aware of them? The White House has promised to cooperate with the special counsel's investigation. Now, given that several of the classified documents were discovered at President Biden's personal home in Delaware, the Republican House Oversight Chair has requested visitor logs to that home for its investigation. In Washington, Chris Pallone, Local 4 News. Lots of people will take on an extra job to earn some extra money. True, but Uncle Sam might be trying to muscle in on your side hustle. Mm. We're going to explain. Also ahead, more than a carjacking, local police are asking for help finding a stolen car and the puppy who was in that vehicle as well.